why am I wearing hoodies in June? And it's mid, actually it's end of June at that. Almost July, okay. I'm not going to any 4th of July barbecues if it's foggy, okay, anyway. Enough of my weather trials and tribulations. Today, I wanted to talk about the pharmaceutical industry. I've been getting a lot of emails from pharmacists, from pre-med students asking about regulatory affairs, and I really wanted to explain the pharmaceutical industry where people don't feel they have to go into regulatory affairs because that's the only information being provided. Remember, that's what Career Savage is all about, giving people the information they need to figure out what they want to do. First, I want to explain retail pharmacy. So you know you have your CVS's, your Walgreens, your mom and pop pharmacies, and essentially what happens is the doctor will write a script, send it to your local pharmacy, you will go and pick it up, the pharmacy technician will fill it, call your um, insurance company if there's any issues, the pharmacist will verify it, things of that nature, and things just keep moving along. You can ask the pharmacist questions if you feel you don't understand how to take a medication or whatever the case may be. I worked in retail pharmacy, I hated it. I absolutely hated it. It wasn't fun. You know, I completely understand patients who are just getting out of surgery or patients who just got out of the hospital and they want their meds immediately. Or you have those regulars who are picking up their birth control or their inhaler or whatever, you know, their Lipitor, blood pressure medications, heart medications, I get it. Some patients are not pleasant. Um, and it's really hard when you're in the pharmacy all day and you're getting yelled at by insurance companies, you're getting yelled at by patients, you're getting yelled at by pharmacists. It's just a very high stress job. So I totally feel for pharmacists um, in that position. And then there's hospital pharmacy, which is somewhat retail-ish because it's essentially still the same thing, but the only difference is the doctors are writing the scripts and it goes directly to the pharmacist who then um, has the farm tech fill it and then go give it to the patient or their nurse or whatever. That I think is far more stressful for a pharmacist because if a doctor makes a mistake, it's on you. So every patient in the hospital is essentially your patient under your shift. Um, and then farm tech, I feel like it's so much more fun. You get to make IVs, you get to fill Pixis machines, you get to talk to doctors, you get to talk to nurses. It's a lot less high stress because you don't really interact with the patients. Now, pharmaceutical industry. I currently work in regulatory affairs. I've made a video about what regulatory affairs is and I'm going to make a part dose for people so I can go a little bit more in depth and explain things that I may not have in my last video. But within the pharmaceutical industry, there's not just regulatory affairs. A lot of people in pharmacy school either don't know this or they only know regulatory affairs because there's that dual program of PharmD, MS, and regulatory which I think is great, but I also think it's really important to understand what medical affairs is and clinical affairs. So now I will talk about a little bit of clinical affairs, which I think medical affairs and clinical affairs are somewhat the same. It just depends on what pharmaceutical company you work for. Under clinical affairs, they may have their MSLs, which is their medical science liaisons. They're allowed to go to conferences, they're allowed to go wherever they want and have these off-label conversations with doctors about certain drugs. And when I say off-label conversations, within regulatory affairs, it's very, 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 very strict, okay? Whatever is on the label that you have submitted to the FDA for your marketed product is all you are, your sales reps are allowed to talk about, that's it. Okay, I don't know what size it is, but whatever it is, that's all you're allowed to discuss. And people in the pharmaceutical industry completely know this. So under clinical affairs, they may have their MSLs, or they may have their medical director or their chief medical officer. Those people may be involved with figuring out different medications for rare diseases or different medications for blood pressure, common diseases. I think medical affairs, again, it all depends on the industry, the company that you work at, because I've worked for a few and it's all very different. Medical affairs, there are a ton of pharmacists in medical affairs from where I've been. And the medical affairs teams, you know, they're having those conversations with the doctors. They are having conversations with other people outside of industry where they're able to bring that information back and you're able to develop protocols. You're able to study new indications. You're able to make adjustments to current indications for drugs that are already approved. You're able to, you know, adjust the dose of drugs that have already been developed, things of that nature. So medical affairs is kind of bridging the gap in a way. So I think if you are a pharmacist and you just graduated school and you're very interested in getting into pharma industry, I highly, 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 highly suggest 
you look at what pharmaceutical companies are in your area. The top areas for pharma companies are San Francisco, New Jersey, Boston, New York, San Diego-ish. LA is, I think it's a little bit dry. There's not many, they're a lot smaller. But I suggest you check what industries, what companies are around and then you look for internships that they may provide. A lot of people will say it's really hard to get into pharma industry if you haven't had an internship or you haven't had any type of industry experience. So that's what I would suggest is looking for what pharma and companies are around you and what internships they may offer. Another thing you could do again is you could go and get your master's in regulatory affairs after everybody getting your PharmD. I think having the MS in regulatory affairs or regulatory affairs certification, which you can't have until you've been working for three years, is great for your profile. I just don't think it's worth spending the money because you're already a pharmacist. You already know everything about there is to know about drugs. <laughs> Um, and you can self-educate on regulatory affairs. You can read books, they, you know, the regulatory affairs, the RAPS, I think, Regulatory Affairs Professional Society, I think is what it's called. They have so many books that you can purchase for like $300. I know it's a lot of money, but compared to what you'll pay for a master's in regulatory affairs, it's slim to none. And you can self-educate on what the FDA does and, and the different aspects of the pharmaceutical industry. I think that's pretty much it. So the, the main things I wanted to focus on is if you are an undergrad or you are you know, studying biology and you don't want to be a doctor, or you're a pharmacist and you want to jump into pharmaceutical industry, or if you're an undergrad and you don't want to be a pharmacist but you want to be in the pharmaceutical industry, what I really do suggest is looking into regulatory affairs, looking into medical affairs, and looking into clinical affairs. There are so many options, so many jobs underneath it. Within regulatory affairs alone, there's pharmacovigilance, there's chemistry manufacturing and compounding, there's um, product development, project management. There's so many different options. Don't limit yourself and always do research. I hope I was able to kind of explain the pharmaceutical industry quickly to you. If you have any type of questions, you can go ahead and send me an email. I'll put my email down below. And check back often, remember, not weekly, because I would be lying, but check back often for new YouTube videos. Bye guys.